I built a seven figure AA business over the past couple of years. And if I were starting again in 2025, here's how I do things differently, especially given the fact that clients now are more skeptical and the market is more saturated. The very first thing that I would do differently is the customer, the, the niche and the person that I'm speaking to. And this is, to be, to be honest with you guys, one of the biggest pitfalls that I see, even people that have been doing it for months, they get this thing wrong. Most people don't know who their customer is. And the problem with not being able to say who your customer is, is the fact that you can't market to them because you don't even know who they are. And so it makes everything way more difficult. I really wish I knew this earlier in my entrepreneurial journey. Even before I did, I made a mini X at my last business. It would have saved me so much time and years. So the key is I, I choose a customer that is first of all, got money because to sell to a business that has money and disposable income and also to sell to a business that doesn't, it's the same level of difficulty. In fact, selling to someone who's got more disposable income is easier. So it's the same amount of effort, if not less, you may as well go to somebody that actually has more money. I'd pick a customer that had more money. I'd pick a customer that is easy to find, preferably digital and preferably service-based. And I would have a very, very clearly well-defined niche. I would use what I call the avatar problem method framework, which is identify who the person is, identify the problem you help them solve, and identify how it is that you actually help them. And if I was starting from scratch, or you know, I was in your shoes, one of the things that I would do is the 1% exercise, which is to grab a big and beautiful sheet of paper. In fact, let me grab this over here. I've got it here. I actually got this um, A3 notebook recently. It's freaking amazing. Probably one of the cheapest, highest leverage hacks ever. I'd get one of these sheets of paper and I would write down, and draw circles like, look, dude, like, what am I in the what, top 1% of people for skill wise, right? Like, if I land 100 people out in the street, what is Jack likely to be better at? Okay, well, maybe you'd say YouTube, maybe you'd write down Instagram, maybe you'd write down automations, or I've got a lot of experience in mobile phone factories. The point is, you get your starting hand, and then you can leverage that and understand that against who your actual customers are. And it's probably the biggest mistake that I see people make consistently, even when they're starting their business. The second thing that I would do differently is volume. In other words, the lack of volume. You would be blown away. I, I say this story all the time, but I'll, I'll repeat it. Somebody in my community, you know, we help people get their first client and we help businesses basically turn profit. And I met with somebody in my community and he said, Jack, I want to grow like this other business. They just seem to really get like all the leads and they're making a ton of money. And I said, well, great. How are they getting their customers? Yeah, through Instagram. That's what I'm trying to do. I said, awesome. How many times did they post last week? He's like, oh my gosh, they did like 14, 15 of them. I said, incredible. Pull your phone up. He said, why? So just show me, your, show me your, your Instagram feed. How many times did you post last week? And he said, zero. And so the key message with the story is that volume actually matters. Remember, to know and not do is the same as not knowing, as Yoda famously once said, I believe. I don't know if it makes it less a legit quote because a green Yoda said it, but the point is that like volume kills. And actually your bottleneck, uh, and I've seen this with a lot of people that we've helped in businesses and entrepreneurs, that volume could be the problem. You're just not doing enough of the thing. So I wouldn't actually limit myself um, and just try and silver bullet. And I suffered from silver bullet. I mean, like, I don't know if you've ever experienced burnout. I don't know if you've ever experienced trying to get clients and it doesn't work. I've experienced those things in my last business. And that's why I'm going to trade. Look, I went through and did some of these things a hard way. So hopefully you don't have to. And I, I speak to you like I would give advice to myself watching this um, years ago before I actually learned this stuff. So the key is that consistency kills. Consistency absolutely kills. And you know, you should be spending four or five hours a day if your diary allows, um, and revenue generating activities, get an accountability tracker. It is literally a numbers game. So if you reach out and I had someone say, Jack, I wrote the best email. I had the, uh, I my lead magnet was incredible and it just didn't get back to me. And I was like, how many did you do? So I did one. Okay, it could be the best thing ever, but if you don't do the volume, you won't get the results. So if you have an honest look with yourself and say, look, can I honestly say I'm doing the reps? This doesn't mean, by the way, that I would go back and I'd, I'd, I'd be, contacting 100 million companies, I wouldn't. I would go for a few companies in a very closely defined niche, like I talked about, and I would do high levels of effort per company because that's what we call whale hunting. That's how you convert clients and crush it. So the action step I would take is get an accountability um, tracker. And the only thing I judge my success on is inputs because the outputs will take care of themselves. The third thing that I would change is 
positioning. Now, when I say positioning, what do I actually mean? I'm, people blunder this significantly. Remember, AI does not sell. Transformations sell. People want an outcome. So selling single file automations or selling a chatbot doesn't really work. But even beyond that, you can take this to the conversations that they have with individuals. And it's like, what is the conversation that you're having? Like, what is the thing that you're trying to deliver with that particular avatar? And it's all about the positioning. Fundamentally, you exist to solve a problem that your customer has. You, exo- you exist to get them more clients. You exist to simplify the process or take some kind of problem away. So the positioning of how I actually pitch the service would be completely different. It wouldn't be a single file 2K or 10K automation. It would be an AI operating system. It would be a strategic partnership where I come in and I say, hey, what is, we work with this avatar to solve this problem. What is your biggest constraining factor right now? We call it the theory of constraints. If we look at your entire business, what is like the one part of that business that's really holding everything else back? Like that if we kind of just solved it, everything would go into stellar. I use example of time. Let's say we're making cakes, right? Or I better still Lamborghinis. We can get 50 tires, 100 roofs, 20 doors, only one engine. Guess what? We only, if our capacity is one engine per day, that is limited our throughput. We can only ever deliver one. So it's understanding the constraining factor of the business. And when we understand that, we can then actually go closer and build out an operating system that solves that problem. So you say your biggest problem is keeping customers, right? Okay, cool. And the positioning for this, guys, is like, you know, we don't work with businesses that we can't deliver a return on investment for. And if we can't do that, there's like no point in you even being around this table on this call, right? Okay, cool. So like, you know, what does it cost you to acquire a customer? Okay, cool. So by not having a system, it costs you, and so you start to figure out, like, like a scientist, what the problem is. And why that's so important is it takes like the biggest problem the business has got, because they've already told us, right? They're constraining factor. They've told us why they haven't done it. They've told us what they want, and you've built the solution for it. So positioning is something that I would spend a lot of time thinking about and prioritizing in the conversations because so many people haven't done it. And most of the coaching I do for entrepreneurs and businesses that go on a huge transformation involves some degree of positioning, which is why I talk about it so much in the community and and build the blueprints for that. The fourth one, and this one, um, guys, is crazy. This is probably the most overlooked of all the steps, and that's to ignore resonance. And by resonance, some people call it customer resonance or client resonance. It's basically the lamp, it's the metal detector at the beach. And when you hear the beeps, we go close to the beeps. In reality, those beeps are buying signals from our customers, right? So we put out messaging. We say, hey, if you are a garage and you're really freaking struggle with blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes, I have that issue. Or you put a piece of content out and they re- and it has resonance. People say, I need you to solve this for me because people would rather not have the money than the problem. That's the reality of it. And like, I, I say this all the time. When I started making AI automation content on YouTube, I had a guy give me a super chat, super generous of him to do that for me. He gave me like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. It was actually in and around my birthday, funnily enough. So it was cool. So, oh, this is really cool. But anyway, it wasn't about the money. The fact was that, he felt like so compelled. Uh, he said like, I know this is so valuable that I'm gonna use it. I just wanna give you money. Like he literally wanted to give you money. That is an example of resonance. Like you, you, you know, you're doing something that's like connecting with the audience. And the thing that most people miss by the way is like they, they want to like um, monetize way too quickly. I'm more interested in optimizing for maximum revenue at six months, five years, and 10 years. Those are the numbers that I care about, not about maximizing revenue for this week. And there's a big difference here, and I'll explain why. Because if we could actually understand, like you're yapping about 15 different things, seven is the thing I care about. I care about 0.7. Actually speaking to clients, working for clients before you building things, you learn so much data and positioning from that that you just become a well-oiled machine. You can find the bullseye way quicker. No one really talks about that. That's why working for free and offering your services for free to get started is such a blessing because you learn the data, you know exactly where they are, and it means you can grow and accelerate way quicker than anybody else. I should also add to this, by the way, I've seen other entrepreneurs talk about this and I'll share some experiences that they won't even launch their minimal viable product until they've surveyed 20 to 50 people. And I'm also talking about billionaires, guys very successful people will sit in rooms and ask questions to their customers. I do it all the time in my community because I, I really genuinely exist. I work for you. I, I help you 
monetize. That's what I do. I le- help you to learn this stuff in the short time possible and turn it into profit and monetize it, right? And you only get that by talking to people and being like, what is your biggest problem? Like, what transformation can I give you? And listening, you're never too big to talk to your customers. And this resonance is all about your connection with your customer. And number five is the most important one that I, I really want you to hear, because if you take nothing else from this video, except for the thing I'm about to tell you, you will leave richer as a result of it. And that is the four letter dirty word, which is work, work and learning. Every single breakthrough that I've ever had in my life, like successful, like literally anything, any hockey stick moment, any, oh my gosh, like how the hell did you do it moments is crazy, has always been followed by one behavior. And that behavior was every time I do the thing, I'm gonna learn a new thing. I habitualize learning. Learning plus action is growth. That, that is growth. But the kind of sick trick of it, and the reason why not everybody you know, everybody wants to be a millionaire driving Lambos, but not everybody is. And why is that the case? Because everyone everyone wants the same stuff, right? Why does that not exist? Because the people that do are unable to endure for longer. They can just put up with the crap for longer. They can learn and take action. If you learn and take action, like failure is inevitable. Nobody's missed more three-pointers than Michael Jordan. This is the point. It's your ability to like learn a new thing. Like when I got my first businesses, um, weekly traffic, so monthly traffic to 50,000 unique visitors a month. I didn't know anything about SEO when I started. I didn't even, I literally, and I said, this is so crazy. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I'm gonna learn one new thing about this freaking topic every single week. That every time I post, I'm learning one new thing. On YouTube, every time I post, I'm gonna learn one new thing. And guys, when you stack that like 40, 50 things, you end up learning a lot. And so it's your ability to put the work in, do it, do it during the days, do it during the weekends, not go to your sister's best friend's uncle's birthday and do the work and kill it. Remember, entrepreneurism is not a sprint, it's a marathon and it's such a fun journey, but I wanna set your expectations. Your skills, your abilities, your knowledge, your growth, will not marry up with your results. In other words, you will know a lot more, you will have done a lot more work, and you'll be a lot further ahead before your actual results catch up. That's why it's so important. And if I was getting started again with my AI agency today, I would have a killer offer, an incredible market, and I'd be putting the hard work in. And I show you exactly how to do that in this video on screen.